Welcome to my Valentine's Day special. This is an informal Valentine's Day special. As you see, I'm kind of doing a get ready with me <laughs> as I'm talking about this. You do not want to miss this special. It is very juicy, <laughs> very informative. There we go. My curls are falling. They naturally fall to here, but when it's curled up, it just stops there. So I'm trying to curl them out. Very, very juicy. So definitely stay till the end. I'm going to be talking about my relationships with dating, uh, my experiences with dating, excuse me, uh, my relationships, good and bad ones. Um, I'm also going to be talking about how I healed from certain ones, how to help you heal, how to spot the green and red flags, as well as some surprises at the very end that I'm going to share with you to help um, you progress during this process. And I, I felt like doing a Valentine's Day special because let's face it, people need help in the, the, the love department, especially, you know, people who might have just gotten broken up with or just broke up or, you know, people don't like being by themselves. And so this is just to help you, you know, grab your tea, watch it, <laughs> get the tea. <laughs> I'm going to be dropping some truths. This is all my experiences with facts, with receipts, with all of it. Um, so definitely stay till the end. You do not want to miss any of this. I'm kind of doing, I'm also going to give you some heart health foods, so I'm kind of doing this like I would my podcast episodes. Like I said, this is totally informal. I never use a script. I don't edit anything. I just talk continuously um, for every video. And so what I do want to say is I am not the girl who is going to be like, all my relationships were bad. Because if anyone tells you all of their relationships were bad, like seriously, run. Because why were all your relationships bad? You're the problem. <laughs> So I've had good ones and I've had bad ones um, with receipts and with facts, okay? So here, is this what we're going to be doing? See, this is where it naturally falls, but it's curled up. I love the curls, but I just want it to cascade. There, there we go, kind of. Okay, is it going to stay? So my first relationship um, was in high school. I had a very loyal boyfriend. It didn't take long for us to get together. Um, he was tested <laughs> by um, this girl. Mm. She was a so-called friend, but everyone found out she was a whore. And she admitted to it, so it wasn't like a secret. Um, she tried actually calling him to get him to, saying that we were moving too fast and blah, 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 blah. When I tell you this, because he's now a man, was not deterred by that, just didn't pay her any attention. Um, we talked about it. He, you know, it was like squashed and done because he didn't do anything with her. Um, he also got to know my family. He used to walk me to my classes. He used to talk to my teachers and we're like, you treat her right. Like, you know. And so during this time... It was my fault. I was very young and I was still dealing with daddy issues and emotional wounds. I was very emotionally unavailable. So anybody who was like sweet and kind to me, I was just like, I am not used to this. I'm not used to this. And I found any reason to cut him off. Any reason to cut him off. Like it was a small, small reason. I think he, he was talking to my relative, you know, trying to get in good with my family as anyone should or would. And he, he wasn't paying me any attention. I was like, you're cut. Because at the time, everyone was like, you're cut. And that meant you were like done. And so I felt so bad. I was like, why did you do that? Like, why did you do that? So I wrote him a letter. And then he rejected the letter. And I was like, damn, I just lost my, boy, my boyfriend. So we didn't get back together. Nine years later, he ended up reaching out to me. And at this time, well, I'm not going to really talk about that too much, but I was like heavy into church. We weren't even allowed to date. I was 23. So he found my number in a phone book. Like I said, if someone wants you, they will come and get you. They know how to reach out to you. Okay. So, you know, that was my first boyfriend. My second boyfriend well this was someone who claimed me 
we were not officially together, but we were kind of together. So I guess you can you could throw him in there. Um, it was like a reviving Ophelia moment. Um, this he was very he was always verbally abusive. Would always you know comment on my stomach. Would literally poke my stomach. He was like a popular football player, and he took a liking to me. He actually stalked me, moved schools and everything to be where I was um, before we even knew each other. And he took a liking to me and claimed me in front of everybody, was very possessive. Um, and like I said, he used to poke, poke my stomach in front of his friends and said I needed to lose that, needed to lose weight. And like all this very, he was very abusive, very abusive. And his friends would just look at him like, but they didn't say anything. He was a very big, big dude. Um, about 6'3", I want to say 6'3", 260 something pounds. Um, very, very huge. And I remember this was one, he wouldn't let me talk to any, I could not talk to anybody. Um, everything always ended up in an argument. I could have said the, and he would have flew off the handle. Like it was very, it was crazy. And so... <sighs> When I was talking to someone in the hallway, he saw me talking to someone in the hallway and I was, you know, again, that reviving Ophelia moment. That movie came out after I like graduated high school. I think it was 2010 that movie came out. I was dealt dealing with this situation in 2005 and he saw me in the hallway and I was like trying to explain to him what happened in the middle of me explaining. He takes his fist and just mushes my face. And I said, ow, and he just looked at me like, good, I'm glad it hurt kind of face, like, mm-hmm, and don't do it again. And I went home and this whole side of my face was swollen. Um, I didn't tell anybody because I wasn't a snitch and I also was kind of living a double life. I was very much a, I was never promiscuous ever. And I'm still not, even as an adult, I've never been promiscuous and we'll get into that. Um, but... Uh, where is I going with this? <laughs> but I did lead a double life. I was very much a um, party like a rock star, star kind of thing. So I had, you know, substance, substance abuse and fighting and just, very, just wild. Just no one could tell me nothing. Just like <laughs> that song can't tell me nothing. Like no one could tell me nothing, you know. And so if I was to tell that, then, you know, I, I grew up. Christian and we grew up in church we weren't I wasn't allowed to date at that point in time but I never listened so like I said I had a double life so if I wanted to continue my lifestyle I was like mm, maybe I won't share this and so I ended up getting away from him um probably would have lost my life honestly because the minute someone hurts you or hits you is you know the next step is you're not going to be here anymore my Spanish teacher ended up saving my life and I was 15 and I remember my Spanish teacher, I remember there was a security guard. I knew her briefly. Um, she went to take a house call and her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend was there, her jealous ex-boyfriend, and he ended up um, shooting her in the face. And um, it was really sad. She was really sweet. And my Spanish teacher was telling me all the signs. He said, well, this guy would stalk her. This guy would... Um, and there's a difference between like stalking possessive, like that's mine and like stalking because you are just cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. There's different types and I'll get into that as well. Um, he was sharing the signs with us in class and I said, oh my God, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Like she couldn't talk to anybody and she got away from him and he found her and shot her. And... Uh, so I was like, okay, I hear you. I heard him, but it didn't spark anything. And then my aunt, or it could have been my aunt who said it first and then him. That was like my, okay, this is done. <laughs> my aunt was, she was very intuitive. Very intuitive aunt. That's the one who I was really close with. We were best friends. She's my second mother. And she was telling me about signs, like randomly signs of like jealous person and watch out for this and watch I was like dad this is what I'm dealing with right now but I could not tell anybody I was like I'm not gonna risk 
living my double life because people didn't know I was doing substances. They didn't know I was like skipping school. They didn't know I was like out and about, you know, just out, just out. Um, and so I didn't say anything, but I've kept thinking about it and I prayed about it and I found my inner strength because at this time I was very intuitive, um, but I was suppressing it. I had, I wanted nothing to do with god angel spirit i was like i just want to live my wild life <laughs> so i wasn't I, I was just ignoring it um there were times i couldn't though and so this time i found my inner strength i prayed to god because you know i still went to church even though i didn't follow anything um and i ended up cussing him out I ended up cussing him out we didn't deal with each other but you know, he was a narcissist. He started a smear campaign and a slandering campaign. And thankfully, um, his friends liked me and they told me about it. And I said that wasn't true. Um, and it was he he started a smear campaign at another school. He was like proud of these things. It wasn't like he wasn't saying like, you know, bad things about me. But he was saying that we did certain things that we did not do. Um, he was proud of it. And I was like. You know, and I was actually afraid to go to the next step with him because I thought he was just going to force me to do it because that's how cuckoo he was. Very crazy person. Um, like I said, I'm not saying everyone is crazy. My first boyfriend was very good to me. Um, the second one was a terror. And then he found me eight years later and I have the message because I saved the receipts and say, in case someone wants to say, oh, no, I didn't eight years later and they said hey miss lady and i said block found me on facebook eight years later eight years later and i swore i saw him in the whole foods parking lot one time when i went so this person really had a hold um on me and was very attached now my third this was the third official um boyfriend i really didn't like i was very like I, I'll stay committed. I was never someone who cheated, but I was very like non-committal in a sense because my work and my school would come first. And so this third boyfriend, I'm, we knew each other since we were 13 and he moved and then he came back and the first person he wanted to find was me. And so he called me with his friend and he instantly said, you know, I want you to be my girlfriend. And I said, yes, because we knew each other. So it wasn't like, oh, you have to get to know each other. <laughs> um, and he tried to make time, wanted to spend time with me and everything, was very protective of me again, very protective. Everyone knew I was with him, including his sister, who I was friends with. Um, just a very protective person, like no one could mess with me. Um, and he was non-committal, like the type that I dealt with were people who, I mean, he, he ran the streets and they were in and out of people, if you know what I mean, in and out of people. But when he got to me, it was very faithful, wasn't trying to deal with anybody, you know what I mean? And so, you know, people just had that respect for me. But anyway, he ended up, I ended up breaking up with with him um actually we kind of we didn't really officially break up it was just kind of one of those things where um because i wasn't spending time with him he kind of we drifted off and then he went to someone else um and i was just like okay i'm going to see the movie elf i don't care about this i went to the movies like i was very i'm just a very detached person i was like i don't care um and so he ended up going to prison for like 20, got a 20 year sentence. He's still in there. Um, and I'm some of the, like, I don't want to go into detail about what he did, but some of the crimes I'm actually shocked um, because he wasn't that type of person. Like me and him got into argument before he didn't open his mouth. He wasn't disrespectful to me. So when I heard some of the crimes he committed, I'm like, I'm just disappointed and just very you know um and as i'm talking about this a lot of times people think when you bring people up that you want to go back to them and that's not the truth um sometimes you bring people up and you talk about them um 
to help other people, to help other people through situations and to let people know that if one leaves, someone else will come in and what's meant for you will be there. So anyway, that was when I was a senior in high school. And then after that, I gave my life to God and I put in quotes because now I'm spiritual and it means something totally different. So I gave my life to God and I was celibate from 2007 to 2022. No, 2023. I'll say that again. I was celibate from 2007 to 2023. Did people start rumors about me? Yes. Are they crazy? Yes. For starting rumors about me. Um, so during that time, because I took my spirituality, my spiritual journey, although I was a Christian, very seriously. Um, and so, you know, I was celibate during this time. I also had another person that I was dealing with. We weren't official, but oh my God. And then there was another one too. All right. Well, let me go back to those. So <laughs> there were... And I'm telling you this because I want to share with you that it doesn't matter if people are younger, like emotionally, you would think they'd be emotionally immature. If someone cares about you, they will do. So I did have this one friend, like it was like we didn't have a title, but everybody knew that we were like this. He was older than me. I shouldn't have even been dealing with him. I had dealings with him, if you know what I mean. I had dealings. I'm not going to go into detail, but I had dealings with him. Um, he was four years older than me. So I was, when I was 14, he was 18. When I was 15, he was 19. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm not going to blow people's cover. I'm not going to, you know, say that. Um, this is just me sharing my story and my experience. But I would call and he'd answer the phone. It was like every day at 2.30, we would talk. Like I still remember every day at 2.30, we would talk. If I was like, hey, I need a ride, he would give me a ride, he, you know? Always made the time to come see me. I knew his mother <laughs> um, and everything. I knew his dog, <laughs> you know? So those are the kind of people that I dealt with back then. He was, I'm not gonna say he was a good person because that was illegal. I mean, just predatory. Um, so we're, I'm not gonna say whether he was you know, I'm just saying how I was treated. Um, and then I met another one who was also out in the street. Also, all the girls wanted him and he did not want them. He actually rode his bike to my house and he stayed at New Britain or Harford at the time. Rode his bike to my house. It was like 15. I skipped school. <laughs> I skipped school. My mom had an inkling because I was like, she was like, what are you doing? And I said, washing clothes. I was washing clothes. I was legit washing, but I didn't tell the other parts. <laughs> oh, sorry, mom. Um, so yeah, he came to my house. We didn't really, we, we didn't really do anything. Um, but he came in with like a wad of funds because he was a drug dealer. He came with a wad of funds. Um, to my house, I think it was like $650 at the time. Um, and just spent time with me, like did it. This is what I'm saying. People will do anything to spend time with you. They don't care how much it takes. These are kind of men that I dealt with. We talked every single day, every single day. He was a rapper, he still raps. Um, I don't keep in touch with him. I just know things because people tell me. But anyway, he was very faithful to me. Um, he even said he loved me. He was in love. I knew his family as well. And when he went to prison, um, I held him down. I had like a free so-and-so on my MySpace when everyone had a MySpace banner. So he was another one who went to prison, not for anything related to me. He had um, a bad temper. I think he hit some man, some dude with a glass or something. Um, He's out, but anyway. And so his family would call and they would keep me updated. 
Um, same with the other one who was older than me. He went to prison too, and I had to keep in touch with his friends and his relatives and all of that stuff. Mainly his friends, but the other one, this one that I'm talking about who rode the bike, it was his relatives, his friends, and all this stuff. And I don't miss that life. I was like, hmm, why am I holding people down in prison and I'm in high school? <laughs> so that was the that was the other one um that i dealt with it was also very kind so see out of all those people one was bad <laughs> one was bad and so then after i gave up that lifestyle i stopped living a double life i got free of um alcohol and cigarettes and smoking blacks i stopped smoking weed but i did still do prescription pills um during the time when i was going to church uh for a little bit it was like the first i want to say five years so from 17 to like was it 21 i would say 21 so four years four years i was still um taking that to get rid of flashbacks to help me cope with um former sexual abuse sexual assault that i had went through and so i couldn't sleep well so i would just pop pills so I can go to sleep um so that's what I did and it to me it was like well that's not really doing anything but it's like no it is you're kind of kind of addicted <laughs> but anyway I've been clean for 13 years so that's something to be proud of um but anyway so I was celibate from 2007 to 2023 and during that time I met my next boyfriend because I had left church in 2016 and so I started dating again so my next boyfriend was in 2017 I had met him at Whole Foods and I was like maybe this is my end all be all and um what ended up happening he ended up being verbally abusive he didn't like that I wore makeup um he would say things like I like I like when you um he would say something like oh or you know just like make bad comments about my face um and I remember when I was going to meet him for a date I could hear spirit realms because this is when I turned more to spirituality um saying no like that like I heard it loudly they were like no so I had to break it off with him and when I broke it off with him thank god because I saw his true colors he said I'm going to kill myself and at this point, I really didn't care because he was very verbally abusive, verbally abusive, like mean, very mean. Um, so I broke that off. And then, like I said, I was sick. I was terminally ill. Um, I wasn't dating anybody, wasn't dealing with anybody. And then my next person I met was in, so out of, I think it was like three or four or five, I did not have sex with all of them. So if you're counting like, well, that's like this many, I did not, it was not, no, I did not. People just loved me for me. You know, I just had, I had relationships that were loving, but I did not have sex with all those people. I did not. Um, I could still count on my hand in terms of who entered. Um, so, my next person was in 2023, which was recent. And this is not to bash him. I don't know if he's watching or not, probably. Um, but who cares? Because this is not to bash anybody. It's just me sharing my experience. And I'm going to share with you how I healed through these situations um, to be a better person partner to someone to be a better girlfriend or whatever to people and to also um, deal with people who were good for me as well and so the next person I met was 2023 I met them at the gym in August and I had I saw them in the elevator <laughs> elevator like a year before was it a year before it was almost a year like a year before and I said, oh my God, you know, at this time I was like acting loyal and committed to like nobody. I was like, why are you acting loyal and committed? I thought he was attractive. I thought he was cute. I was, should have got his number then. I was like, oh man, now I don't know. <laughs> now I don't know who he is or where he is. And so 
spirit told me to go down to the gym and I was like, I don't want to go. And I didn't, it was a long day. I was 137 pounds. So I was like, what is that now? I was like overweight. That's not my normal weight. I was used to being in the 120s. It was not a good time in my life. When I tell you it was not a good time in my life, last year was not a good time. It was not, I had lost, um, I was still healing from a traumatic brain injury when I met him. This was six months in from a severe traumatic brain injury. I'll say that again, this was six months in with a severe traumatic brain injury. So I didn't feel well. I didn't feel well at this time. I didn't feel like working. I wanted to rest because I had to work while I was supposed to be on bed rest. And I was like, oh my God, my body just couldn't take it anymore. Let me do this again. My body just could not, there we go, take it anymore. And so um, I was like, oh, dear God, I was like, I look, I felt like I was puffy and all this stuff. It was just not a good look. I'm in the 120s again. <laughs> I'm happy. It's just spare rounds into me for disciplining myself because um, that's, I feel better that way. And so Spirit said, go downstairs. And he was downstairs. I was like, oh my God, that's a person who was on the elevator. So I initiated the conversation and the contact, which I also never do, by the way. Usually people reach out to me, no matter what I have. I could wear a puffer coat and I get dudes. I remember my face was burned and people were trying to talk to me and I was like, yeah, I'm not trying to date anybody right now. I'm trying to get home. This is when I had to travel back home from where I was because my face was burned. Mm -hmm. And people were still trying to talk to me. And yes, they could see that my face was burned. I'm like, you do see that. <laughs> they don't, they didn't care. People just are attracted to me. I get, you know, free non-alcoholic beverages when I go out, whether it's water, or juice, or like um, a mocktail. It's, 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 you know, it's not only men that do that, women too. Like I remember my food was like $60 and she was like, oh, you only got that, right? And she knew I didn't, but she just didn't want to charge me like, you know, so sometimes people say, how do you know when you're attractive? It's like, well, you get free stuff when you go out, <laughs> you know, not that I need the validation at all, but I was just giving that as an example. So anyways, I started talking to him. We exchanged, you know, Instagram and then he took me on a date shortly after we were talking, he took me on a date shortly after, um, and I'm trying to remember if it was the first, prior to the date, I think I met with him a second time and he started talking about children. We were talking about children and, um, you know, how he wanted to raise his children and how I wanted to raise children or whatever. So it was like good conversations. Um, and then I'm trying to keep it chronological order here. So... I might pause a little bit. So we went to, I wanted to go to a pizza place. So we went to a pizza place and we were talking and he had mentioned, you know, I was like, oh, I, you know, this was fun. You know, I'd like to do this again or something. And so we were talking about going to Disney and then going to Park City because I met him at Utah and I love Park City. Did I go to Park City since then? No, I went to Brighton. I went to Brighton. I went to Brighton. I've been to various places at Utah, but Park City is one of my favorites. But anyway, and so after the date, I had went to his house. Nothing happened. I was just watching like watching movies because it's very difficult to get inside <laughs> of me. It just is. I'm just not easy. Um... I'm just not easy. And so we watched movies and cuddled and stuff. And then I lost track of time. Um, and then I went home. So I went home. And after that, like I said, like I said, I had a head injury. And this was my time. Like I said, God did send that person into my life. And I'm thinking, 
by him being sent into my life, I was like, well, maybe God wants me to be with this person. Maybe he's sent into my life to, um, not that I looked for people to help me because I was very independent. I was like, maybe he's here to help me. Cause when I tell you healing, I was still healing from a brain injury. It was bad. It was bad. I had um, a couple of my clients like didn't pay and they were supposed to pay like a thousand. And then I had my funds on hold. They wouldn't go to my account. And so I was facing like literally being like kicked out. That's what was happening. Did I tell him that? No, I didn't tell him that. Um, Cause I don't tell, I don't mean, mention those things. I did say something, this was later on as I got to know him a little bit better. Like, I don't feel like working. I was, I, I didn't. Who feels like working when they have a traumatic brain injury, their head is hurting, they're tired? Like, do you know all the symptoms that come with that? And so during this time, what I want you to understand is I was not in the right frame of mind. It's not an excuse. I was literally not in the right frame of mind. As a matter of fact, there was a, a meme about traumatic brain injuries and how you're susceptible to people gaslighting you and narcissism and not really catching on cues because your brain is injured. <laughs> Thankfully, my intuition took over and I'm going to get into that a little bit more. But after that, we, let me look at my text messages. Nope, I have to have the receipts. I don't think he spoke to me after that. I don't think he spoke to me after that. I had sent over, but he would message me all the time. So I wanted to send a message to him. So I sent one. He left me on red. He left me on red. So I I was like, oh, that's how he's doing it. So it's like my brain was bothering me, but I was still with it a little bit. I was still with it a little bit. My intuition, thank God for that. So I unsent the message and didn't hear from him for a whole week, but he still went to the gym. So I brought it up. I was like, oh, where were you for a whole, you know, what happened? I had sent you a message, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, I didn't see it. Um, yeah, I was busy. And I was like, busy what? He, he said he went away, he was traveling. I was like, oh, talking to other women? Cause I call people out on stuff. I call people out, you know? Cause I don't like being bamboozled. So I was kind of calling his bluff. Um, he was like, no working, you know? So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm on the bike and I'm just like, oh, okay. And so I said, well, I haven't sent the message. And he said, you're such a child. So here goes the gaslighting. Here goes the gaslighting, not taking accountability, knew that he just didn't want to talk to me, probably was talking to other people. And I called him out on it. Now I'm a child for unsending the message. And so that's what happened with that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. What happened after that? <laughs> Well, what happened after that? Let's see. I don't want to click on anything and like call God. Well, I'm just going to say what I remember. I'm just going to say what I remember so far because I have the text messages right here in front of me on my phone. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh God, don't click anything, please. What happened after that? Oh, I got his number. Yep, I got his number. This is September 1st. I'm reading the text messages. And he said, you're gonna miss out on another horror marathon. And this I think was after the gym, after I went to the gym. Cause we went to the gym late. So it was like 10.30. This text message was September 1st at 12.20 a.m. And so I said, you want me to come watch it with you? So again, not really, you know. She said, you're always invited. Don't want your clients getting mad if you're up all night with me again, okay? So I have the text messages here. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to be like that. So I, like I said, I went to his apartment again and we watched movies. It was a bit, it was more cuddly. I think it was cuddling again this time. Um, 
what happened after that? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember everything. <laughs> I'm trying to remember everything. Um, but he would say stuff. The gist of it is he would say stuff like, he said he was moving to Houston, Texas. And I said, oh, well, I would go with you if you moved, you know. And he said, you would? I said, yeah. And so we would talk about that. And he started talking about like when we would watch a movie. I guess this was love bombing or whatever. When we would watch a movie, he would talk about how he would decorate the place. Because I said something like if I would say, oh, I really like that design. He would look at me like, I don't like that design. I'm going to decorate the place. Then he mentioned about getting up at night to to rock the baby or something because we were watching movies where there were children. And so it was planting all these thoughts in my head like he wanted something long term um, and he agreed to having me move in with him. So I'm just thinking like maybe this is a spiritual connection. Maybe God wanted me because I was definitely told to go downstairs. So there was a reason. But what people have to understand is even though God may ordain for you to like be with someone, people and you were obedient to that, people have free will. And so his free will was I'm not going to we're going to get into that. So his he followed his free will, which didn't have me involved in it. And so we would text back and forth but then it would go like silent again and i would always have to like either reach out to him or wait till he was at the gym and i was not one to reach out first all the time i did not like doing that so i had to wait to see him at the gym so it really started to be like again like i said i was not in the right frame of mind um but i also take accountability I was not in the right frame of mind. And um, I forgot what happened. I don't feel like going back into those text messages. But long story short, there was something, something that happened. And I said, you know what? Damn it, what happened? He just wasn't conversing with me. He did, he never took me to Park City. Um, then started saying stuff like we couldn't be out and about. So I'm like, you know, so I didn't, I was like, okay, you know, um, he didn't text. He wasn't trying to see me. He wasn't trying to like meet up. So I said, something's fishy. So I tried to break it off and he swore up and down that he didn't cross me. We were dating. This was considered dating. But at the same time, it was confusing to me because he also wanted me to move in with him. Then he was talking about children. Then he was talking about home decoration. So I'm like, okay. Um, then what else happened? Let me go back to these. Like I said, I don't want to click on anything because I, I haven't sent a message. I haven't spoken to him since September. And... Um, All right, September 6th. Oh, I was telling him, I was like, this is supposed to be like a talking stage, dating stage. And I said, it's not going anywhere. Here, these are the messages. It's long. That's his response. So see the messages. Okay. Um, but anyway, so I said, this, this isn't going anywhere. Um, and I told him, I said, I feel like you're talking to other people and people you could possibly, you know, maybe be working with or, you know, something. I was picking up, like, I could see stuff before it happened. Um, and I said, well, since you're going to do that, I'll keep my options open. And here's the thing. At the be very beginning, he got offended with me asking him, like, are you keeping your options open because... Um, I just wanted to be fair. I wanted to be loyal. I wanted to be upfront. And so, you know, that would have been fine with me had he said, I'm keeping my options open. Um, then I would have kept minds open, but he said, no, I'm not keeping my options open. He said, you're the only one I'm talking to. Um, you're the only one I'm dating. And so I said, okay, I'll give him a chance. And so during this time, this was September 6th. He said he did not cross me at all. 
And so this behavior continued where I had to see him at the gym, didn't feel like I could contact him, didn't feel like I could text him, didn't feel like I could do any of that. It was like a barrier. Um, and so, like I said, I was not the type to um, chase after people. I guess some, I guess one or two of those times would be considered chasing, but I, I would consider it me trying to get clarity. But he did, I tried to break it off. Um, like I said, I met him August. I tried to break it off September 6th, and then it just, you know, continued. And then I met with him again. And so, and I also asked if he was talking to like other people, which he said he was not. So he denied whoever he was talking to. And then I could see on Instagram because he was saying he was not he was he was saying he was busy and all of this stuff and like he couldn't really talk and so I was like okay so I pointed out that he had time to I think what did it was there was no communication there was no trying to see me although he said I could come over anytime he didn't initiate that so I was like well maybe you don't and then he didn't want to go anywhere then he didn't spend anything you know um didn't like invest in me just wanted to meet with me and I was willing to do that at the time because I'm like well I'm gonna be moving in with him anyways <laughs> that's where my brain was. I was like well maybe he's just getting his shit together before I move in with him and I started to like I said dealing with brain injury then it, it started to click I was like maybe I'm not moving in uh, <laughs> at this point and so what did it he kept saying he was busy he didn't have time that's a red flag. So he's liking girls' pictures on Instagram. And that's what did it. I was like, you know what? You told me um, prior to this happening, prior to this happening, I think I started to reflect on things prior to the situation. I want to go back a little bit. I started to reflect on things. And I said, you know what? I can't call him for a ride. I can't call him for certain things. I have, I was just stranded hiking and he saw that I was stranded. He didn't reach out. He didn't say, oh my God, why didn't you call me? Are you okay? Because I was almost not okay. There were strangers who had to help me pass those rocks. I will still go hiking up there again, Lake Mary. Um, and then I had to hitchhike. And a stranger who's very dope, by the way, very cool. You were listening to Tweezer, Fish. Is it Fish? Fish by Fish. <laughs> um p-h-i-s-h -I, I believe that is and so i had to hitchhike back and i was like man he really doesn't care so i had his adidas pants his black adidas pants that i wore also had his socks i washed his pants because i'm clean and i gave him his pants back um that same day i didn't ring the doorbell nothing i just politely i folded them like the virgo rising that i am the cancer sun virgo rising that i am and put them in a plastic bag i put them near his his, his house um and that was it you know i gave him his pants um i was still in communication he he again there was another week of no talking no trying to see me nothing i didn't know what was going on with him but he saw i was stranded and he was liking girls pictures on instagram um and i don't know if he did move to houston i don't know if he's still at utah i haven't seen him but anyway so that was the last straw for me and I pointed that out because he told me to let him know if I didn't want to do this anymore and I said I can't do this anymore um I'm not gonna read the full message but it was just basically me telling him that he needs to go see somebody he needs help because he's a narcissist blah, blah 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 all this stuff um or a sociopath or a psychopath because he was saying all this mentioning children mentioning me moving in actually before I um went to his apartment again he was talking about, like I said, he just still didn't say that he was dealing with anybody. Um, he said, well, it'll be up to, he said, when I move, it'll be up to you if you want to come with me. So he was still going with this narrative. Um, during this time, I was ovulating and I did go to his house, uh, but I denied sex with him during that time because I didn't feel like he was investing in me and I was like if you don't you're not investing you don't get the mango <laughs> 
and investing meaning he didn't show me that he cared um i remember leaving the house because i could not drive because brain injury and someone saw me standing outside of starbucks a stranger who was a man he was like you good you need a ride sketchy but you know people were still asking another person when i went to whole foods was upset that i had to wait you know for the uber and so i was like you know what? i really cannot rely on this person this person really don't give a f about me so i broke it off um i broke it off and i said you know what i'm gonna find a new person that treats me right and this time he didn't like even bother and told me that he was moving but see, he he didn't tell me, he didn't ask me, he didn't say, hey, I, I'm definitely moving because it wasn't a definite. But when it was a definite, he didn't tell me until I sent that last message wanting to break it off and he said he was moving. And I was like, oh, so you weren't gonna take me anyway. I didn't say that, but I told him he lied. I told him he lied. I said, you're dealing with, I said, you know, the people that I used to deal with, you know, they might've been abusive. I said, but you're the worst. And I said, they, at least they didn't cheat. And I said, I know we're not in an official relationship, um, but I said they didn't cheat. And he said, you know, so, I don't want to look at these messages again. This is drama. It is just trauma. It wasn't trying to string you along or bring confusion into your into your life, but it's clear that we are very different. This was a very new thing, and I wasn't expecting anything in my life while in Utah. Um, he said, I know you'll find someone who has what you need. It's just clearly not me. So I responded, I said, I don't think it's by accident that we came across each other's path. I'm not sure what differences you're referring to. I'm melanated, he's not. He's not, we also have different beliefs. I'm psychic, psychic medium. He's, um, his family and him are into, I don't know the political term, is it Mormon or LDS? I don't know the political term, okay, I, forgive me. Actually, no, I'm not gonna say forgive me, F that. Um, I just don't know. So I said, I'm not sure what differences you're referring to, if it's nationality, diet, because I'm vegan and he wasn't, um, skin tone, other people's opinion. He did not respond to any of that. So that was a factor. I was like, no kidding. So I'm thinking in my mind, I'm not saying he is, but I'm thinking in my mind, this dude's been racist the whole time. Like that, all this time you thought that was a problem. You weren't communicating that. And like I said, I'm not, I broke, kind of, kind of broke my celibacy. Broke it. I'll just say I broke. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Um, during this time, and I'm just like, so it wasn't a problem then. So, I almost got sucked in. In some cases, I kind of did. But like I said, I had a brain injury. I was dealing with that. And so I'm talking about this situation. This situation doesn't bother me um, anymore. I don't care if they're dating. I don't care if they got somebody pregnant. I don't care if they're married now. Um, cause I haven't spoken to him since September. That was the last message I sent and I did not reach out ever since. Um, I told him I had blocked him because I said I was going to block him. He blocked me first. And so then I just blocked him back and I blocked him on everything. So there's no communication. I don't go and see what he's doing. I don't care. Um, and during that time, during that time, I was um, making stories on Instagram and he would always watch my stories, but I noticed there was another viewer. So let's just say, it'll say nine, let's say it said 90 viewers, okay? It would only show 89 people and there was like an extra person during the time that I was talking to him when he started to follow certain people, certain women, that's when I started to notice it. 
Am I accusing them? No, I'm just making an observation because that never happened before. It only, and then when I blocked him, it was the right amount of viewers again. So I'm just like, it was like someone had hacked my phone just to see what I was doing. That's the feeling that I got. But I always go with facts. I'm just sharing with you my observation. This is not to bash anybody. I'm sharing my experience, okay? And so, like I said, I don't care if he's with somebody. I don't care if he hates my guts. I don't care if he moved on. He could do whatever he wants. You could, what did um, Meek, I'm quoting Meek Mill in Dreams and Nightmares when he said, fuck, suck, and swallow. I don't care. I don't care what anybody's doing. I don't care. That's not the point. The point is, during this last situation, I felt disrespected. I felt disrespected. Um, it has nothing to do with oh, I have feelings for them. Oh, she just can't get over them. That was not it. I was over, I was over the feelings, whatever, for a while. I took time to focus on my work. Um, you know, after that, I, like I said, I lost weight. I felt more like myself because I was very, I was very depressed. I was very sad. Um, I did have to tell my mom about it because there was, I was like, who am I going to talk to? Um, so, you know, she was helping me with it. Like I said, I take accountability, um, for letting things continue, but I think in my mind I was, it, things were not clicking, but my intuition did, I did listen to my intuition. So I am grateful for that. Um, and so I was just like, what the hell happened? Um, I was a bit disappointed in myself, um, just disappointed in the whole situation. And like I said, no one has ever cheated on me. Technically it wasn't because we weren't official. Um, no one has ever cheated. Um, no one has ever left and didn't want to come back. Like I said, I have and I have the receipts on everything. I could log into my Facebook right now and show you. Mm hmm. People contacted me eight years later. People I went to high school with men eight years later. This was on an older old Facebook eight years later. Not now, but they did. Um, and so I was upset, but I was upset because I was disrespected because I don't allow people to disrespect me. No one has ever gotten away with disrespecting me. I've confronted the issue. Now, if you did something behind my back that I don't know about, I'm not about to look like a crazy person and confront you over things that I feel and things that I know. And yes, I'm intuitive. Yes, I might've dreamt stuff. Yes, I might've seen stuff. But until I have that solid evidence in the 3D, I don't say anything. I'm not about to look crazy out this bitch. <laughs> you know, confronting people on some, you know, I grew up very differently. I grew up very differently. You know, um, sometimes people are like, oh, just move on from it because they were raised differently. You know, some people were raised on a silver spoon. Some, some women may cry about it. And then they're like, um, you know, they, it's just like, oh, no big deal. And I did reach that point where it's like, no big deal. Like right now, it's like, no big deal. You know, I don't care. I'm not even upset about it anymore. But it's the disrespect that I don't like people getting away from with because I was raised differently. Um, I was raised around gangsters. I was raised around, you know, we learned code and loyalty and respect very early. You know, while people were playing outside and I'm just being real. This is me. Real and raw and unfiltered. I'll be unfiltered. <laughs> People were going, while children were playing out in recess and just focusing on going home, we were at Six Flags, but we also had to know, you don't go down this street. My whole family, like I said, is from the north end of Harford. And while my mom, you know, had me go to school at Newington and decided to raise me there, I spent a lot of my time in Harford. So I had to know certain things and how to navigate. We weren't allowed to go on different streets, on certain streets. Did we? Yes. But we learned how to respect people. We learned loyalty. We learned from an early age, cheating was bad. 
lying is bad, being manipulative is bad, effing someone over is bad, um, going with somebody's boyfriend is bad, even if you don't like the person. We learned that, and some people don't get that. They weren't raised like that. Like I said, I was, um, I grew up around people who were infamous on gangland. You know, real people. Um, if you read my book, you know, what happened to me when I was little, you know, and I was sexually assaulted and sexually abused, there was a hit put out on somebody. This, this was my life. I'm not saying I have any involvement in anything, but people don't play about me. And I'm not saying that people are, I'm, no one's going to do anything to him that I know of. <laughs> That's, that's not why I'm making this, you know, because I could have, if I wanted to, I could have easily, um, like I said, my mom calls me Colombiana because I just don't let anyone hurt people I love. I don't let anyone hurt my family. I don't let anyone hurt me. Even if someone was to talk about a relative who I don't even talk to anymore in front of me, they would get cussed out. Why? Because I still have loyalty and that's disrespectful to me. I don't know you like that. So we were raised a bit differently and not everybody was raised like that, you know? Not everybody was raised like that. They weren't raised, you know. I, I remember looking outside of the window and I've never told this story. I remember looking outside of the window and it's like you saw things to keep you in check. Um... I looked outside of a window, a woman, while well, I was at my aunt's house, on the north end of Hartford, a woman owed somebody some drug money and they hit her head with a car tire. This was a woman. It was, be it was two men beating her up and two other women beating her up. I learned loyalty and code very, very early. Very, very early. And I take my respect very seriously. That's why I used to, like I said, I used to get into a lot of, uh, you know, fights. If someone hit me, I, that would be the end of it. And I didn't fight like a normal person um, since I was five years old. I fought like a cat. And it wasn't just, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, just scratching and I would punch people. But it was like, the marks that they were left with, it looked like they had third degree burns. I was, yeah, I was young, since I was young, from young up into high school. You know, my adult years, I did have to defend myself a few times, but it was not that bad as it used to be because I worked on myself. I was in anger management at an early age and I'm proud of myself because I don't get into altercations like that because I don't allow that drama in my life. And I also use my intuition you know, to navigate accordingly. And so no one has ever disrespected me and got away with it. And I feel like what was keeping me from letting it go was the disrespect. You know, if someone tells you they can relate to Joe Pesci on Goodfellas character, believe them. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to commit a crime. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to throw my life away for someone. I'm not calling him stupid either, by the way. I'm just saying, I'm not going to throw my life away for someone, but I can relate to the respect that he wanted. He wanted to know why he was amusing. He did not let someone say and do things to him. He confronted it, you know? There's a time and a place as well. And that's, what, that's when my intuition, you know, is like, no, no, no. Or angels are like, no, no, no. We're gonna take care of it. And so I don't feel like the situation was taken care of because, and I, I waited to do this. I waited to do the video. I waited to mention this because I'm like, oh, maybe he's going to remedy it. Maybe it'll take a kind of, and just never did, just never did. So I'm like, well, you know, you're not going to keep me being quiet and not revealing what happened. Like I said, I have a right to voice what happened to me. This is not a smear. This is the difference between a smear campaign and the, and talking about what happened is the truth a smear campaign is false so if he said i was trying to trap him no if i could say that about him because i know what happened that day then i could say that about him i had to deny him that 
and I was ovulating. So if he said that, that was a lie. And I don't know what, I don't know what he said, but I'm just dispelling it. Um, you know, I smell good all the time in all areas. So if that was said, that's also a lie. Um, and like I said, I don't know if he said anything. So I'm not, and I'm not going to accuse him of saying anything. Because I'm just a real person. I don't go around gossiping. Um, and that was also frowned upon gossiping. You know, you don't gossip. You go to the source. And so that's just a little background. So how I've healed from that situation is focusing on work. Um, focusing on work. Focusing on myself recognizing that um, everything happens for a reason, learning the lessons as to why something happened. But don't think I'm hard. Don't ever think I'm harping on anybody. Even if I talked about my ex-boyfriend who went to prison, I don't want him back. He committed horrific crimes. Um, he was a good person before he did that. That's what I'll remember. But I don't want anybody back. If God wants me to have somebody back, or what if, if they're supposed to be aligned to me somehow, okay. But in terms of me today sitting here with you and being like, oh yeah, I'm making this because I know I'm making this because I felt I want to help people. And I'm talking about the last situation that happened because I felt disrespected. It has nothing to do with feelings. I felt disrespected and that's why I was harping on it. No one's living in my heart and I just, oh my God, I just miss it. Oh my God. I don't care what he's doing. I don't care what he's doing. Um, doesn't matter to me because I'm happy internally. So focusing on that self-love, that internal love, that's, that healing, that happiness. Um, recognizing, you know, why did you meet this person? Why did they do that? What within you um, still attracted a lesson? You know, are you afraid to be happy? You know, do you not feel like you're worthy? Do you not feel deserving? You know, you got to ask yourself these things. And I had to ask myself these things. Um, do you still have daddy issues? And I didn't. Um, I, had, I just had a lot going on. Like I said, my brain injury. Um, some clients didn't pay. And it was like a lot. And then... Prior to that, like a month before, although that was my birthday, I had um, applied for another job because I have a Capricorn stellium and I'm out here by myself. I'm like, well, and it was a financial job and the lady had access to my bank and took my funds out. And so I was dealing with that. I was like, do I have to get like a lawyer for this or like not that I, I could represent myself um, too? Um, in certain cases, of course, but I was like, should I, do I need to report her, blah, 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 blah. And so um, thankfully I reached out to other people and was able to work with them. Um, they had compassion for me. And so um, that was like a crucial time in my life. And then he just up and left. I was like, oh, you know what? God will make, and then um, someone had said something to me and I was like, God will make a way. And God did. And I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, and I deal with uh, great clients. And I got more clients doing other things. So I have different streams. And I'm just like, oh, cool. Um, so sometimes you may think that, you know, God brings certain people in your life to help you. And sometimes, in the, I, I believe he was. But people have free will. And like I said, I'm, I've always been independent. I've been working since I was seven, took a break because I was seven years old. I had my own stream business. And then I started working um, from 15 and I never stopped. So I've never depended on anyone. You could call my family members who some of them don't even want to be bothered with me. They will tell you she does not ask me for funds. So I don't know what that was about. I don't ask people for anything hardly. Um, did I, during that situation, I, I was like forced to, cause I'm not in debt. I don't, um, but they got paid back. They get paid back. I'll say they get paid back. So I don't, I've never been like, 
a gold digger looking for people for funds because I mean I wasn't really given anything dealing with them so you know what I mean um, but the way I, that's the way I healed from that situation and just working on my body and focusing on what makes me happy. Um, how I healed from my former abusive situation years early, and that was emotional abuse. The recent one, that was emotional and mental abuse and psychological abuse and spiritual abuse. It was just bad. Everything but physical. Everything but physical. Yeah, another red flag was when he was like, when we were watching a movie and I was acting like I was the grudge and he hit me right here. You see this? Where I had my concussion, like play hitting and I was like, ow, and he didn't say anything. So that was another red flag. He just, he didn't care. Or showed he didn't care. Um, I, don't, I didn't say he was physically abusive. I didn't say that. Um, I'm just saying the facts. So... What is another, the way I healed from the former abusive situation years ago, um, I, I really, I just moved on from that situation. I focused on, you know, being with my friends, having fun. Um, that took a while for me to heal from because I didn't address it. I didn't know like it was bothering me. Well, I knew it was bothering me, but it was just something that was like on the back burner, really. Um... I think I had to get over my, cause sometimes when you go through immense trauma, you keep like opening the wound, opening the wound, opening the wound. Cause you're not used to feeling at ease. You're not used to feeling peaceful. Um, and so it was almost like, you know, you're not addicted to trauma, but you're just so used to that feeling. Um, being sad and being depressed and all this stuff but when you take yourself out of that mindset and focus on what and it has to do with you feeling deserving too like what you have to really get to the root like it's deep um what's keeping you from healing what is keeping you stuck in these cycles you know what i'm saying so now i will be attracting better for myself you know I after that situation I'm more in touch with my feminine side I'm more feminine I'm more willing to submit to someone um I'm more submissive when I have something to submit to once I see someone's um investing in me whether it's it I'm not saying financially although usually men do that when they care about you but just um being there as you know being emotionally intelligent showing that you know they care um and what else just i was thinking about something <laughs> just showing that you know you care and so yeah, so I'm open to kind people. I no longer like that toxic love because that's what I was drawn to um, before. Um, I healed certain issues that I was dealing with, um, things that I was holding on to. And so, you know, that's also what I got out of it. But now I'm more open to manly men who also are in touch with their they know how to care for a woman and so i'm i'm excited actually i'm excited i'm looking forward to it because i've seen all the flags um which brings me into like what green green flags and red flags so red flags are someone who is saying what they're gonna do and their actions don't align with it love bombing you saying all this at the beginning and there's no follow through again um not communicating with you even if someone is a bad texter because let's face it, everybody doesn't want to text they should be trying to see you so if no one's trying to see you they're not interested um so those are the some of the main flags if they start like critiquing you early on 
you know, because sometimes you see couples like on TikTok or on Instagram, they're like, oh, look at your big toe. And they're just joking with each other. But if someone's, you know, critiquing you and saying, you know, I wish you looked like her or, you know, if only you could, you, if you're, if only you were not melanated. <laughs> he didn't say that, but I, that's, that's, that's what I got from it. Because no response is an answer. I'm not accusing I'm just saying no answer is an answer. So I was just like, oh, I like my skin. I love my complexion. And I've been burned three times. I've been burned three times. I'm a leukemia survivor and I embrace all of it. I still have, you know, scarring. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I still feel beautiful. That's what actually helped me with my self-love. I'm like, listen, I was burned and I'm still here. And I love myself even more. So if someone doesn't like me because of my complexion or because I'm melanated, like, I don't care. Um, oh, that's another um, thing. Always look, not that you're spying, but always look at like who they follow and who they, who's, who they give their attention to. If they don't look like you, they don't like you. Okay. They don't like you. Green flags. Um, Someone who contacts you earlier in the day, um, someone who tries to meet up with you, someone who has visions and goals for the both of you as to, you know, what they want to do, if they want to be committed. Um, what else is a green flag? Someone who shows that they care, you know. That's really huge. Like someone's showing that they care about you. Um, and I'm not saying be like, some people view that as an escort, but if you are having sex with somebody, I mean, they should be investing in you in some way. I mean, he, they, the last person I dealt with, they did pay for like dinner. You know what I'm saying? I didn't pay for it. Did I bring funds just in case? Yeah, because I don't I don't trust people to do that. You know, some people are fickle, so but um you know eventually I mean some like I said I've met men before who I wasn't dating who who did invest in me. Like I said, paid for me to meet with them for like a, for a business meeting because they were a client. They paid for my travel, my ride. And just gave me funds because of the person that I was. People thought I was stunning. I went to the Peninsula Hotel at New York. This was years ago, about four years ago. Just thought I was stunning and just liked me for changing their life and just gave me funds. You know, so if you're dating someone and they just don't invest in you at all, like, I didn't say be a gold digger. I'm saying someone that is showing you that someone is showing you that they care. Can you take care of yourself? Probably you can, but you know, someone showing you they care, they would invest in you, whether it's, you know, a gift, doesn't have to be huge, um, or taking you out to eat again, not just once, or um, providing in some way if they see long-term with you. I mean, do we really have to tell people this, you know? So, that that would be a green flag. Someone who doesn't cheat. Someone who, if they're not feeling the situation, they'll tell you up front. You don't have to think about it. They'll be like, you know, I'm not really feeling this. And then they let you go gracefully. Um, someone who doesn't want their cake and eat it too, kind of thing. So those are the green and red flags. Those are the green and red flags. Um, and like I said, that's how I healed. And... I don't want to miss anything. So here are my books. Here's the surprise, my books that I wanted to share with you for Valentine's Day. And I wrote the book Dark Chocolate Love because I can relate to him, relate to it. I was in abusive situations before. Um, so it's a series, it's an opposites attract series. Dark Chocolate Love. And I'm really happy. I'm really in a good place um, right now. So 
Oh, another red flag is if you start to feel like flies in your stomach, not butterflies, butterflies are awesome. But if you start to feel like flies and mosquitoes and it's just, you gotta go take a shit three times a day, run. If, you're, if you feel calm and relaxed, stay, okay? So books, these are my books, Dark Chocolate Love. This is the first book in the series. And it is about um, someone who is overcoming domestic abuse, someone who's in violent situations, um, someone who's getting cheated on. It's short story poems. Um, and it's a cynical. So it is a cynical, erotic suspense thriller. And so don't do anything in that book. It's supposed to be, you know, for fun. Um, it's just a way to get revenge without getting revenge don't go and get revenge away with getting revenge without getting revenge <laughs> um because let's face it when you're in domestic abuse situations you're not winning the you're not you're not winning the fight i know the person that i dealt with i wasn't trying to fight them back so at the time have i had to defend myself against a man that big later in life yes and i got the better of them so um, because it'll teach you to be tough. But anyways, so this is available on Amazon. You could go on my site um, underneath the shop tab and go to books. It just shows you how you can heal from that. And then the second book in the series is Love Like Chocolate. This is someone who's healing themselves like I did. So I, I referenced my books, um, who's healing themselves, going on to bigger and better things, um, allowing kind men to come into their lives who treat them like royalty, who treat them like an empress, um, and how working on your self-love attracts people to you, um, and being content that way, you know? And so, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and the person who understands the assignment will come along, you know? So that's what that is. And um, speaking of chocolate, dark chocolate is amazing for heart health. Definitely support and protect your heart. Everything is related. So if you are dealing with heartbreak or overwhelm or stress and anxiety, dark chocolate without sugar ooh, is your best friend. Is your best friend. Cayenne pepper is also great for heart health. Um, and Dr. Morse's products, which I'm going to link and the description box below are great for heart health. You have strong heart, blood, blood and circulation, blood circulation. Um, there's also another blood tincture. <laughs> Your lymphatic system as well. And yeah, so I hope this Valentine's Day special helped you. Um, like I said, I'm doing I'm doing well now. I don't want an apology. I don't need anybody to remedy anything. This is just me freeing myself of that because I don't want that to live in my system and just sharing my experiences with you so it can help you. Hopefully you felt like this was a relatable Valentine's Day special. And... Um, I just wish all of you the best. Was there anything else I wanted to say? Much love to all those who receive. Yeah, I'm the type of person, I don't cheat, I don't lie. I say what to say up front, but I like people who communicate. I'm a Virgo rising. I have heavy Gemini in my chart, Gemini dominant in my birth chart. I'm a Gemini in Vedic astrology. I'm a Cancer sun in Western which goes through all the signs. And so I'm very communicative because Mercury is my chart ruler. And so I like people who communicate. I'm not someone who chases after people who pursues people, you know. Um, I think, you know, the guy should pursue the woman. I mean, I've shown interest before, but if it's not like, if you don't see that that's interest, like if I liked a photo or something, I'll just keep it moving. <laughs> You know, I don't, but I don't really like, I don't like anybody's photos. And I remember I made a video on TikTok. I was like, I'm not going to like any man's photos. And I haven't since then. I have not since then, unless I'm following them, unless I'm following them. But I just, 
I just don't even bother. Um, so, like I said, I know how to be submissive. I don't mean being controlled, but I know how to, you know, whatever. What is it? Cook, clean, wash clothes. I do that naturally as a Virgo rising in a Cancer sign. You know, that's nothing to me. Raising children, I've done that since I was, I don't have children of my own. I helped raise other people's children since age nine into my 30s. So... That stuff comes naturally to me, but in terms of like being controlled, like abuse, like that's not going to fly with me. But submissive, being submissive, being soft, being attentive, I can be that. Um, and I'm not as hyper independent as I used to be. I'm very independent, but I'm not hyper independent. You know, I've healed that. So sometimes people look at spiritual people and they're like why do they encounter bad relationships well there's still some lessons that we have to learn too and so that was my last lesson i had to learn um and it was a huge one and now i'll never attract that again i'll never attract um toxicity to my life i had gained weight and everything it was just eating up a storm and then the minute I had left, I started to lose weight. But then and during my healing process, I was gaining it. I was like, damn. <laughs> and so then I lost it again. So it's off for good because, you know, there's nothing bothering me. So um, hopefully, like I said, you can relate to this. Just know that you are more than enough. Um, you don't need anybody's validation. Do not try to get somebody to come back to you. Um, if you did leave somebody, don't look at what they're doing. Don't care about who they're with. Um, start focusing on yourself. You'll manifest people who are meant for you. And like I said, again, this is this 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 has nothing to do with feelings um, and me wanting anybody back. This has to do with I was simply sharing my experience to help people and I was disrespected. That's what was the holdup with me is I was like, oh, I felt disrespected. Um, you know, and other people don't like when I'm disrespected either. Um, so people that love you don't like when you're disrespected, but you know, some things you just like, you know what, I'll just have to let God deal with it. Um, like I said, I don't expect, I don't want an apology. I don't want a remedy, um, now cause I'm past that. I'm so, I'm so past that, but you will meet good people, you know, good, trustworthy people who care about you. You won't have to teach them. If you have to teach someone how to treat you, just let them go. I'll say that again. If you have to teach someone how to treat you, just let them go. And most importantly, love yourself. You don't, you, you know, it's good to have someone on Valentine's Day, but let's say you don't, you know, still treat yourself with kindness. Still take yourself out, you know, grab my books that can help you. Um... And that's pretty much it. This, like I said, was informal. Let me do this again, these curls. I don't hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. Um, there we go. Um, but it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. You'll also encounter um, some women who want you know, men, I'm not saying the last person, but like I said, I don't know who's watching my stories during that time. But, you know, if ever someone did disrespect me or did something behind my back in a shysty way, um, eventually the truth will come out and I will address it. I will address it, you know, because there are people who... Like I said, you know, my old, old friend from high school did that. And, you know, there are some women who do that. They will stalk the living hell out of you just because they want to compete and they want someone that either is interested in you or you were interested in and they gossip about you. They slander you to get the person. And meanwhile, you are just like, what is going on? You get random like jabs thrown and everything and then when you address it then it's quiet you know so but like I said until I'm approached about anything um until I'm spoken to um until I have evidence that people did anything behind my back there's nothing for me to address I think that's a pussy move and it's weak 
to go behind someone's back and do anything. And again, like I said, <laughs> you could F, you could suck, you could swallow. I don't care what you do. It's about the respect. It's about the respect and it's about you can't respect, disrespect me. You just can't do it. You know, there are consequences for that, whether it's karma. And like I said, if I find out evidence um, against anybody, it could be for anything, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. And if, you know, certain things have to happen, you know, in terms of like, um, I'm not saying crimes or anything like that. I'm not talking about violence. But if certain things have to happen to where, you know, people have to be sued or, um, you know, it's best to tell people because if, you know, you end up finding out you get evidence, it's just like this could have been resolved earlier. You know what I mean? So that's it. And smearing and slandering is illegal. And so a lot of my clients deal with that on TikTok. It's illegal. Like if someone's stalking you, it's illegal. Report them. Um, you know, if you don't want to snitch, but some people didn't grow up, you know, the way that I did. So you don't have people backing you, <laughs> you know, um, if you don't have people backing you, then you're just going to have to report it, you know, because let's face it. Some people, they fight dirty. They fight differently. You know, you don't want to put your life at risk for that, you know, just report it. Or have a meeting, you know what I mean? But I don't want to ramble. So like I said, I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope everyone has an amazing Valentine's Day if you want to have one. And I will see you in the next video. And like I said, I'm excited to um, be joined with someone who's, you know, kind, understanding, patient, emotionally intelligent, communicative, kind. Did I say kind? Filled with love. Um, someone who's a real man will tell you the truth. Um, just an upfront, an upstanding good guy. So that's it. I'm just more excited, but I'm focused heavily, you know, on things that make me happy. And I think that it'll just align to me. You know, whatever is supposed to align will. And that's it. So I'll leave you with that. Whatever's supposed to align to you, well. <laughs>